Hey guys, CJ here, PBX How To's. Uh, we're going to talk today about AAR and ARS and some of the other technical stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to make it simple for you, okay? So, when you are at your office and you're on your via PBX and you need to make a phone call, you're going to dial, you're going to pick up your phone, you most likely will dial 9 or some type of access code to get to an outside line, okay? And I'm going to show you the magic that happens uh, when you do that, all right? So let's first look at a diagram here. And the way this works, and again, this is very general, but here's the PBX, which is right here. This is an 8300, it could be an 8700, it could be whatever. But any of the any of the big S type PBXs or the Definity interfaces, this is how, how most of it's gonna route. And actually, this is how it routes pretty much in the IP office and some of the other phone systems. But in general, this is how it's gonna work. You go from the PBX, to the ARS and AAR, which are just tables. They're tables to say, where do I go when a user dials a specific uh, digit or numbers, okay? Then it says, go ahead and take that and route it. And the routing table tells you what trunk group it needs to go out on, okay? But I'm gonna show you each of these, all right? So obviously here's a PBX, and think of it this way is that in the PBX, we have feature access codes. Now, everything you do in your PBX aside from the dial plan is in your feature access codes and actually you got to set up your dial plan to be able to access feature access codes and let's look at that real quick so we can see what we're going to enter as our uh, dialing so I'm going to say I want to be able my users to have the access to 8 and 9 as a feature access code now I can choose which hour, where I want to put those but since the standard or what everybody does is nine for an outside line and eight for something else okay so i'm going to say my aar is going to be eight my ars is going to be nine and actually you could have an access code two if you wanted but you know basically it takes you to the same table so we're going to submit this display feature you can see now if a user dials nine it says go to the ars and look up everything after nine all right so if i'm on my phone and i dial nine Everything else after I hit 9 is going to be looked up in the ARS table. So, let's say we want users to be able to dial 1303. All right, so the way you do this is you got to do this in ARS, and we're just focusing on ARS right now. We'll talk about AAR later. But ARS essentially, I mean, because AAR is essentially the same thing, just where are you going to send it? All right, it just gives you an alternate, alternate uh, location to send calls. So, we're going to do change ARS ANA 13. And you can see there's a default number of items. And remember, I defaulted this PBX, hence why everything is in deny state. All right. But what I want to do is I want to go down here and I want to say 1303. And I could do I could do a number of things. I could put the full number in here. So 303, 555, 1212. So if anybody dials that specific number, where do I go with it? Um, if I put X's. 1303-555-1212. It says, accept only this amount of digits. Okay? Or just send everything that anybody dials 1303 somewhere. The minimum amount of numbers is going to be what? It's going to be the minimum amount that the system allows for the users to dial. That makes sense? Let me clear that up. <laughs> so, this basically says, the system needs to accept the minimum amount of numbers because if you don't, if I dial 13035, it's going to wave me off because it's expecting more. All right, so I'm going to say uh, 11 because again, 303 555 1212 is 10, but you have to add the 1 here, so that equals 11. Maximum 11. This is another way to say you can only accept 11 because they can just keep dialing and it's going to, it's only going to take the first 11 digits after a user presses 9. All right? So, we're going to send this out route pattern 13. Y'all know why. Call types. Look these up uh, if you want the details on them. Again, I'm doing, trying to do this as a quick tip. Um, but essentially, these are the different types of uh, uh, call types that you have, whether it's home, whether it's long distance, or, or basically foreign. So you have your home NPA, your foreign NPA, or international, all right? So we're just going to say FNPA because it's foreign outside of my where my area code is. And let's just say for this exercise, my area code's in, I don't know, 602, all right? So no number, I don't care about that right now. So there you go. 
So now when a user dials ARS, oops, ANA1303, when a user dials 9, it's going to take them to this ARS table and they dial 1303, it matches right here. And it's going to stop matching, meaning I'm not looking for any other specific number after 303. I'm just accepting everything when I see 303 up to and at least 11 digits. Okay. Then it sends it out route pattern 13. And then it's a foreign type of call. So let's look up route 13. Display route 13. Now you can see my route pattern 13. This is the routing. This is this part right here. So I showed you PBX, which is the feature access codes. Feature access codes, you know, dial in 9, dial in 8. I showed you the ARS table. Now I'm showing the route pattern. And the route pattern says, what do I do? Where do I go? Okay. So immediately I tell it the trunk group I want it to go out on is 13. Because that's the trunk group that is my ISD and PRI, local and long distance PRI. So I send all calls out that trunk group. All right, FRL is a, is a facility restriction level that basically says what what has to be accepted and things like that. I'll talk about FRLs later because they're pretty detailed, all right? What's the NPA? I don't have anything in here, but you can put the NPA of where you're going out of. Um, you can do some other cool things like uh, you can delete digits and insert certain digits. Let's say you have to do a 10, 10, 120, which I don't even know if those are even around anymore. But let's say you have to insert certain digits to go out the call so it's getting billed correctly. But if you pick, if you PIC or pick your, your carriers correctly, you should have to do this. All right. But I'm just showing you the basics, guys. <laughs> all right. So it goes out trunk 13 and it sends a call out that way. So that is is this part right here, the trunk group. <clears throat> so when the phone gets picked up, it hits the PBX, you dial nine, it says look up everything after nine, match it to an ARS entry or an AAR entry in the PBX, send it out the trunk groups that are assigned in the route pattern, which in, in our example is 13, okay? And send it out the trunk group that's assigned, which is 13. Display trunk 13. So it says, send it out this ISDN PRI trunk group 13, which is my local and long distance trunk group. Okay. So again, all this programming, I mean, there's a lot of programming that goes into, goes into supporting this because the ARS tables can get really, really, really big. Um, ARS, ANA, 13. So you can see that they, they can get, you can get very, very detailed in controlling your calls. So if you want to, if you want to deny someone, so let's say you have a user, right? And again, we're focused on ARS. That's why I'm not going too much into the trunk groups and routing patterns, but ARS. Let's say change ARS ANA 1976. Okay. You can see in here that I have one XXX, how ironic, <laughs> um, 976. I deny it. Okay. But let's say I want to deny 1976. And I don't care anything after it. I don't care. It could be minimum one. It could be maximum of 11. I don't care. Anything that dials one, actually, let me take that back, four. If I dial one, nine, seven, six, the minimum I'm, I'm looking for is one, nine, seven, six. And anything else up to 11, I immediately deny it. Okay. And what this means is it just waves them off. It says, you cannot make this call. Okay. Um, I don't care. You can put home. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, you can put you can put FN or HN. It doesn't matter. Um, let's say you have someone that's been abusing your system and is calling a specific phone number. Let's say one eight hundred two four two two one two one. Let's say you don't want anybody calling that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to. All right, so you can deny that from happening. So you can tell people, look, I don't want anybody calling out on this number, and that's it. So you can turn that off, turn it on. You can allow it, you can disallow it by using ARS tables, all right, or AAR tables. Um, like I said, this is a quick tip on, on ARS and AAR. AAR is just another, I mean, it looks identical. So, oh, sorry, six. What? Oh, 
Jeez. I don't know what I'm thinking, guys. Sorry about that. Just minimum and maximums. That's what you want to have for all your numbers, all right? Just because you can see I kind of screwed up there. But, hey, I'm, I'm human, I'm normal, and it's Monday. <laughs> all right, so we're going to say submit that. We're going to say change AAR ANA 1, 3. Now, there's nothing in my AAR tables, okay? Because ARS is your really your control tables. But, again, it's the same thing. So, meaning it's the same thing as an ARS. You can have entries in here, the minimum, the maximums, what route patterns they go out on, call types, node numbers, things like that. I personally use AAR for when I'm doing SIP uh, routing between PBXs. So I tell someone, hey, if you need to call the Denver office, you dial, you dial 8 and you dial the digit code. So the digit code could be, I don't know, let's say 513. And it says minimum 7, maximum 7. And if they dial 513-6613, it's going to go out route pattern, you know, whatever. And the call type it is, it's, it's always uh, HMPA or whatever um, that way it goes out my sip trunking my VoIP trunking uh, again because it's it's an alternate way of routing calls that's why I use AAR and I also use uniform dialing plan um, so if I if I have specific extensions at certain offices I can tell that that uniform dialing plan to go to my AAR or ARS whatever the case may be so you can you can short code things if you will short code <laughs> I just put an IP office term into the affinity what's wrong with me all right. Anyway, so if you have any questions, don't uh, don't hesitate. Ask me, please. I'll be happy to uh, answer any specific questions you have on ARS or AAR, even uniform dialing plan. I can show you an example of that if you'd like. Just let me know. And uh, definitely like the video, favorite it, let your friends know. And if there's anything else you guys would like to see, please let me know. I will talk at you all later. Bye-bye.